Hello, this is Galen Pickett, Cal State University of Long Beach, and this is the introduction to the um, to the tracker tool. Um, this it, this is the mechanics that you've got to uh, have control over in order to do the first tutorial laboratory in our physics online course. So here's the tracker tool. I've started it up. Um, here's what you're presented with when you start this on a Windows machine. So um, under Video tab, um, I'm going to import a video for this. Um, exercise, I want you all to pick um, bounce toss out dot move. So here's where, if you've got your own video from your own cell phone camera, you can import it um, directly into the system. But this is the one that I'm going to import. So you get this little um, notation there that some of the frames um, differ by the mean. Um, so the frames to exclude, so the recommended clip. 1 and 31. What it's saying is that the first, um, the timestamp on the first frame is um, is different from the timestamp on the zero frame. So um, that's a good thing to, um, uh, to to go. I would just go with the recommendations for that frame duration thing. So here is um, video, and you can you see down here there is a uh, thing. This is frame one. If I go forward, I see a hand which is moving back and forth. And right there, I see there's a ball that's being released. In the background for this one, you can see that there are these 10 centimeter markers. So um, the very first thing we're going to do is create a coordinate system. See this little cross here? I will create that. There is our x and y coordinate frame. I'm going to put, just by dragging the center here, I'm going to put my coordinate frame initially on the location of the little ball. Uh, so there, I've got x and y located where the ball starts at frame number 9. And now I am going to um, uh, insert here a calibration stick, so therefore, so that I can move, I can translate um, dots on this video screen into measured distances in real life. So here's a calibration stick. Now the 100 you can edit if you know that you've got in the background someone that is two meters tall. That's me. That's about six feet. You can use put this at, at the person's head, that at the person's feet, and then you've got um, one meter here. I'm going to change this to one meter. Um, the background bar here that that been set up is at, at 10 centimeter increments. So I'm going to take the first one and put it there. The second one I'll put at just grab it. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, there. So now I've got a one meter scale put down on this thing. Now I'm going to um, create a, um, a point mass. Point masses are how the system refers to spots in space that you're going to be measuring motion of. So the, um, the point mass is the thing that I want to create. So mass A is the one that we are going to be following here. So I'll go forward in time. Just keep clicking frames forward until I get my ball right at the origin. There. Now I'll hold down the shift key on my keyboard. See, that's notated by shift now. And every time I touch the screen, I will mark where the ball is. And then it goes forward one. I just go and keep clicking where is this thing at on different frames. And the system is automatically getting x and y coordinates for this dot and times for it. So I'm just going to keep going and doing this as long as I can see that dot. There. So now I've got all of my data, you can see it roughly, the timestamp data um, is shown on the screen here. And now I've got all this data here in the table for mass A. So I will, oops, I will select all of that. And then I will copy it. So copy selected cells, let's use as formatted. Oh, let's use full precision. Full precision. And now I will open up a blank tab on Microsoft Excel. And in the first cell of the page, I'm just going to paste it all in there. So now I see I've got mass A, the times that it occurred, and then the positions that it occurred in meters. 
So I'm going to add some columns here. Let's say I want to know what Vx is. And this is going to be meters per second. It's the units. Vy, meters per second. And then I would like to know what is Fx in Newtons. What is Fy in Newtons? And I'm going to use all. So let's say that the mass here is a relatively small mass. M equals 0 0.25 kilograms is what we'll use for this uh, for this measurement. So you may already know how to do these sorts of um, importing um, data into um, um, Excel and doing analysis with it, but I want to show you how to do that. Um, so you click on a, so I want to calculate what the VX is. You use an equal sign to tell Excel that you're going to be doing a formula that is a, um, something that's based on numbers that are already in the spreadsheet. So the numerator of this expression involves what is the x position at the next time minus the x position at the current time. That's x final minus x initial. And then I divide that by how much time went by. That is t final. Oops, I gotta do this with a um, parentheses. There is t final minus t initial. And that is a measurement of what is in meters per second, what is the x component of the velocity? Now I want to take that same formula. Instead of copying and pasting it, you see there's a little black dot there at the bottom. You grab that and drag it down. And that same formula has now been calculated on each one of these. So let me click on the 16 there. If I look up in the formula bar here, it says that it took B17. So B17 is the next x component minus the current one, so that's delta x, and then I divide by the next time minus the current time. That's the dx dt. So now I've calculated meters per second there. I'll do the same thing for y. Oops. Notice what I did there. When I when the expression was valid, I changed what the expression was, so I'm going to redo that. So now everything is cool. For the y component of the velocity, I, I need another again, a formula. I need to take the future position for y, and subtract the current position for y. And then I divide that by the, in parentheses, the future time minus the initial time. And that tells me what the vy is. And then I can fill that formula down all the way. And you see here, um, if you get um, uh, uh, some strange expressions here, it is because um, See, it's not quite formatted so that you can see it, but it is a number, minus 2.24 times uh, 10 to the 0. So the, the numbers are there. In fact, if I will increase this, you should be able to see exactly what they are. OK, so now, to calculate what the x component of the force is, we use the momentum principle. Again, it's equal to the x component of the momentum. So let's, 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 put, let's in, in, insert a couple of columns here. Um, insert, I'll call this one um, Px, and that is going to be in kilogram meters per second. Let's insert another one here. I'm going to call this one Py, that is kilogram meters per second. So I've got the x component of the velocity, I get the x component of the momentum by saying my mass 0 0.25 times that value of the momentum, or that value of the velocity. So there is in kilogram meters per second, fill that all the way down, do the same thing here, 0 0.25 is the mass times the y component of the velocity. So now I've got momentum all the way down, and now I can use the momentum principle to tell me what the force is. This is, again, a formula that says the change in momentum for the x component, that's the future value of the x momentum minus the current value of the x momentum, and then I divide by how much time went by. That number, oops, again, I need to do this in parentheses. This number minus this number. That's the delta t. And I found an error there. Um, yeah, it looks like I forgot to put the close parentheses, and Excel has helpfully put it in for me right there, so I will accept that as a correction. So there is the x values of the force, and I'll increase it a little bit so you can see what that looks like. Now, what are the y new? What is the y component of the force? I'll increase this ahead of time. So, I get 
the dp for the y component. That one minus this one. And then divide by how much time went by. Again, open parentheses, this one minus this one. And I fill that all the way down. And there I got an analysis of from measured trajectories from this um, uh, from this data set, from the t, the x, and y that I get from Tracker, I now have got a measurement of what the forces are from that data. It's exactly the same kind of breadcrumb data that um, that um, uh, matter and interaction says is the only thing you can use to um, to see what's going on. So let me make a plot here of what um, the x force and the y force look like as a function of cell number. So I've just selected all the data, and under the Insert tab, I'm going to make a line chart like so. And there you've got um, numbers for um, a, a plot that you might want to use. Now, if you look at what happens to the FY, the very last one is a little problematic. So um, cut. let's try selecting a little different slice of data, say that much, Insert line there. And now we have numbers which are floating all over the place. The blue line corresponds to fx. And notice that's sometimes positive, sometimes negative. But it seems to average around 0. The fy is mostly negative. Now, if I want to know exactly what those averages are, let me select that much data for x. And down here at the bottom, you see its average value was 2.1 times 10 to the minus 1. 0.21 newtons is the average force in the x direction. There's the average. Let me check the average for the y. Average for the y was minus 1 newton. Minus 1 newton for a 0.25 kilogram object. Let me collect a little bit like that. Minus 2.49. 2.49 is a 0.25. You can tell yourself what is uh, the, uh, you can figure out for yourself, there's the y component of the weight force, minus 2.5 newtons for a 2.5 kilogram mass.